Good morning, everyone. Uh, it goes in and out of dark and light. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not. You see, uh, I guess it has to do with whatever else is around. I am gonna go and worry about that. I have the little one asleep, so um, I'm gonna try and see if she'll stay asleep for me to do this really quick. Yes. Uh, went to my grandson's birthday party yesterday and he had a whole bunch of friends over and my daughter did a fabulous job. They had a Nerf, Nerf gun uh, uh, little thing set up, little, it was big. It was all the way at the bottom of their hill. It's this huge area and they were just with cardboard. They set up some stuff where they can go behind and hide and there could be two teams and oh they had a fabulous time it was it was just amazing and uh, the all of them loved it and then uh, they had some cupcakes and then they did presents a couple hours of absolute fun running around outside the weather played with us so uh played along with us and it was everybody had a great time the adults the children everyone it was a wonderful party and it didn't cost a fortune. Yes, uh, just saying. All right, <clears throat> so that's that. That was our lazy Sunday yesterday. Let's get going. Last book in the second book of Maccabees. We made it, we made it, yes. <laughs> so, second book of Maccabees 15, Nicanor's Blasphemies. Ah, dear me, give me something good to read. Nicanor heard that Judas and his men were in the neighborhood of Samaria, so he decided to attack them. Now, at this point, it sounds at no risk to himself on the day of rest. <laughs> Interesting on how, uh, you know, when, when you want to do stuff like this and how, oh, we know about their customs, so... If they, since they do believe so strongly, we're going to be successful on that day, right? It just, I, I thought, seriously? To go and attack people on their more or less, you know, holy day, the Sabbath? What a lousy thing to do. I mean, that right there tells you, man, you know what? You're, you're doing things like this. You're not right as a person. You're just not. <laughs> And the other thing, if we want to believe what we're reading here, have, it, have the outside guys not realized yet on how they're not going to win? Why the continued attacking and all that? And then that also tells me, oh, what... I was say, is God really in all this, or do they just take turns winning and losing and looting each other and destroying each other's stuff and destroying each other and, you know, uh, collateral damage? The common citizens, pff, what does that matter, right? I'm just saying. It's, ugh, whatever. Those Jews who had been compelled to follow him said, do not massacre them in such a savage, barbarous way. And then there are the Israelites' own people. It says right here, those Jews who had been compelled to follow him said, hey, let's not do that. That's not right. Well, how about, how is it right for you to be in, an, in, in the opposing army of your own people, regardless? Respect the day on which the all-seeing has conferred a special holiness. Well, that is so hypocritical of these Jews. I'm such a sorry, but no. <coughs> At this, the triple-dyed scoundrel asked if there were in heaven a sovereign who had ordered the keeping of the Sabbath day. When they answer, the living Lord himself, the heavenly sovereign, has ordered the observance of the seventh day, he retorted, and I, as a sovereign on earth, ordered you to take up arms and do the king's business. For all that, he did not manage to carry out his wicked plan. 
Well, okay. Judas harangues his men, his dream. That's an interesting little... So now, having said what I said, so what if these Jews that didn't care to be with Judas because they disagreed with whatever, kind of safe now their own people on that one particular day because... Uh, okay, so... All right, so does God work in mysterious ways? Okay. Is he in all of this, really, when it comes down to it? All right. Judas harangues his men, his dream. While Nick and... Oh, so... But, but does it also say, if he didn't have all these men, these Jews, who now are not willing to pick up arms on the, seven, on the Sabbath day, now he couldn't do it. He could not... He could not, you know, he did not manage to carry out his wicked plan. That's what it says here, right? Well, again, so if those Jews would never be in that army, in Nicanor's army, and actually be with Judas or be in, with, on the side of, Israel, of the Israelites, right? then he would not have been able to carry out his wicked plan either. Oh. Judas harangues his men, his dream, while Nicanor, in his unlimited boastfulness and pride, was planning to erect a general trophy with the spoils taken from Judas and his men. And when did that happen? Maccabeus remained firm in his confident conviction that the Lord would stand by him. He urged his men not to be dismayed by the foreigners' attacks, but keep, keeping in mind the help that had come to them from heaven in the past to be confident that this time, too, victory would be theirs with the help of the Almighty. He put fresh heart into them by citing the law and the prophets and by stirring up memories of the battles they had already won. He filled them with new enthusiasm. Why did he have to do that? If the people, if it really, truly, all these soldiers in the army and the people were so with him, because, hey, God's with them, and they've seen it. They know victory will be theirs, that they're... Then, why does he have to do that? You see? Hey. <sighs> it sounds all good. It really does, doesn't it? But really, when it comes down to it, yeah. Mm. Hmm. And he has to remind them of the past. Why? Everything went so well with the Almighty with them. Hmm? All right, all right, all right. Having thus aroused their courage, he ended his exhortation by de demonstrating the treachery of the foreigners and how they had violated their oaths. Have, okay, how did he do that? doesn't say. Having armed each one of them, not so much with the safety given by shield and lance as with that confidence which springs from noble language. He encouraged them all by describing to them a convincing dream. <laughs> a vision, as it were. Oh, he knows it will work. What he had seen was this. Onias, the former high priest, that paragon of men, modest of bearing and gentle of manners, suitable, suitably eloquent and trained from boyhood in the practice of every virtue. Oh, it's that one. Onias was stretching out his hands and praying for the whole Jewish community. Next, there appeared a man equally remarkable for his great age and dignity in, and invested with a marvelous and impressive air of ma majesty. What? Onias began to speak. This is a man, he said, who loves his brothers and prays much for the people in the holy city. Jeremiah, the prophet of God. Jeremiah then stretched out his right hand and presented Judas with a golden sword, saying as he gave it, Take this holy sword as a gift from God. With it you will shatter the enemy. Interesting dream. Uh, if it's true, or vision. Ugh. The disposition of the combatants. Encouraged by the noble words of Judas, which had the power to inspire valor and give the young the spirit of mature men, they decided not to entrench themselves in a camp, but bravely to take the offense, offensive and in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. 
to commit the result to the fortune of war since the city, their holy religion, and the temple were in danger. Their concern for their wives and children, their brothers and relatives, had shrunk to minor importance. Their chief and greatest fear was for the consecrated temple. A thing. Ooh. Wow, this is very revealing right here. In many ways. Those left behind in the city felt a similar anxiety, alarmed as they were about the forthcoming encounter in the open country. Everyone now awaited the coming issue. The enemy had already concentrate, concentrated their forces and stood formed up in order of battle. With the elephants drawn up in a strategic position and the cavalry disposed on the wings, Maccabeus took note of these masses confronting him, the glittering array of armor and the fierce aspect of the elephants, then raising his hands to heaven, he called on the Lord who works miracles in the knowledge that it is not by force of arms, but as he sees fit to decide that victory is granted by him to such as deserve it. His prayer was worded thus, You master sent your angel in the days of Hezekiah king of Judea, and he destroyed no less than 185,000 of Sennacherib's army. Now once again, sovereign of heaven, send a good angel before us to spread terror and dismay. May these men be struck down by the might of your arm, since they have come with blasphemy on their lips to attack your holy people. And on these words, he finished. Hang on, y'all. Maybe I can continue this. That little one just woke up. I really wanted to finish this book today, huh? Maybe I have to make one part one and part two. Hi. Yes, yes. Hello. Hi, pumpkin. Oh. 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 Okay. 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 Hi. Hi. Hi, Mary. Hello. Let's see if we can finish this. <coughs> we just have a little bit more to go. The defeat and death of Nicanor. I don't really have anything really to say. It's just, it's good she woke up. I'm just going to finish this reading. I've said enough about it all. Um... The Defeat and Death of Nicanor. Nicanor and his men advanced to the sound of trumpets and war songs, but the men of Judas closed with the enemy, uttering invocations and prayers, fighting with their hands and praying to God in their hearts. They cut down at least 35,000 men and were greatly cheered by these manifestations of God. When the drawing and triumph... Wait, 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 wait. When the engagement was over and they were with drawing in triumph, they recognized Nicanor lying dead in full armor. Oh. With shouting and confusion all around, they blessed the sovereign master in their ancestral tongue. He who, had, he who as protagonist, had devoted himself, body and soul, to his fellow citizens and had preserved the love he felt, even in youth for those of his own race, gave orders for Nicanor's head to be cut off with his arm up to the shoulder and taken to Jerusalem. When he arrived there himself, he called his countrymen together, stationed the priests in front of the altar, and then sent for the people from the citadel. 
he showed them the head of the abominable Nicanor and the hand which with and the hand which this infamous man had stretched out so insolently against the holy house of the Almighty. Then, cutting out godless Nicanor's tongue, he gave orders for it to be fed piecemeal to the birds, and for the salary of his folly to be hung up in front of the temple. At this, everyone sent blessings heavenwards to the glorious Lord, saying, Blessed be he who has preserved his holy place for, from pollution. And that's not pollution? Okay. He hung Nicanor's head from the citadel. Oh, God, that's gross. A clear and evident sign to all of the help of the Lord. They all decreed by public vote never to let that day go by, by un, unobserved, but to celebrate the 13th day of the 12th month called Adar in Aramaic, the, the eve of what is called the day of Mordecai. Another party. Compiler's epilogue. I'm not dying. You've been so good. <laughs> So ends the episode of Nicanor, and as since then the city has remained in the possession of the Hebrews, I shall bring my own work to an end here too. If it is well composed and to the point, that is just what I wanted. If it is worthless and mediocre, that is all I could manage. Just as it is injurious to drink wine by itself, or again water alone, whereas wine mixed with water is pleasant and produces a delightful sense of well-being. So skill in presenting the incidents is, is what delights the understanding of those who read the book, and here I close. Okay, I, I don't get the delight. What I did get, though, mixing water with wine, what does that actually mean when he says that? Throughout the whole book, what did I say? What's true here and what's not? Huh? Yes, just a lot of it made up and a little bit of truth in there, a lot of water and a very little wine when it comes down to it. Okay, just saying. Well, there it is. It, the, the, the compilers, yeah, whoever compiled that, in his own words. Yeah, for some, this will be a fabulous work of whatever, and to others, probably not so. Why the difference? I think I gave my opinion or my understanding to it and why I feel the way I feel about these books. Yes? Okay. All right. That's it. I have got a little one to take care of here who is still very, very happy to just suck on my finger, but we need to get a bottle ready, don't we? Hmm? Mommy left us some milk. Yes. Let's go have some. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah. Okay. All right. May Heavenly Parent bless and protect you. And embrace you with love, and I will talk to you all, God willing, tomorrow.